Hi there, I'm James Uren, I'm the Technical Director at MOSIS and in this tutorial I'm going to step us through uh, setting up N-Display with VP Pro. Um, this is so that you can have a tracked frustrum on your LED wall. Um, now we've created a few tools inside VP Pro to make the setup of this a bit easier, um, but for more information you can look at the full N-Display documentation on the EPIC website as well. Okay, let's get started. So we have here the Australia scene from the Unreal Marketplace. This is Epic's scene, it's freely available. Um, and we're gonna go through the process of setting this up uh, on our LED wall. Um, now, just to talk through the hardware we have here, I have a, an editor computer um, that's running, this is all running Unreal 5.2. And I have a render node, so another Unreal computer that's running the switchboard listener. And that's waiting for commands from switchboard, which we'll see shortly, to launch the project. Those two machines have the IP addresses 101 and 100 on my local network. And there's a couple of other things to note here about your physical setup. So we know the size of our LED wall here is four by two and a half meters. The number of pixels is 2048 by 1280. And our origin of our Star Tracker map, so that's where Star Tracker has the zero point of its map, uh, is the bottom left of the LED wall, and that is actually 14 centimeters off the floor in this case. And we're going to need that information because we're going to plug it into the end display config shortly. So, first thing to do is to grab the example end display config that we provide in the plugin. So, this is in uh, the VP Pro content end display example configs. I'm going to make a copy of that in my local content folder here and I'm just going to call that uh, end display config James. There we go and let's load that up and have a look. The end display config is really designed to tell Unreal about your LED wall configuration and how to map the pixels from the various nodes onto that LED wall. So there's a few parts to that, and there's a couple that we need to change in this case. You'll see that the resolution is not correct here, for example, in this viewport. So we're gonna go, let's change that first. So on the uh, node here, we just need to set this to our pixel width, which is 2048 by 1280. And the same on the viewport point. Um, uh, we'll just change that here to the same resolution. So that's configured how to map the output pixels. We now need to tell Unreal uh, about the actual physical wall. So we do that by setting the dimensions of this static mesh. And it's actually already been set. The default here is four meters by two and a half and offset by half of that in centimeters to put it in the correct place. The default viewpoint here is the um, center of where you want your lighting to hit, so normally your subject. So I've just positioned that 200 me uh, centimeters, two meters away from the wall in our case. Um, and that's going to be the point at which the outer frustrum is rendered. So there's the part that the camera sees, the inner frustrum, which is rendered at the highest quality, and then there's the outer frustrum, which is rendered at a lower quality because it's just for lighting. So we'll compile the blueprint and save it and then drop it into our scene. Oops, drop it into our scene. And I'm just gonna rotate that around to point it at this nice tree. And in our case, if you remember, the uh, Star Tracker origin was 14 centimeters off the floor. So we just raise it up by 14 centimeters there as well. Now we need a camera. So I'm gonna drag a camera in from the place actors uh, menu here. So it's under Mosis, Mosis camera end display, drag one of those into the scene and then I'm going to pick it up and parent it to the end display config. Um, so it becomes a child of it and let's zero out its transform there. There we go. And now we need to add tracking to that camera. So we, we're going to um, just set up Live Link as we normally would. Um, you can see how to do that in the previous tutorial, in the VP Pro Basic Setup tutorial. Um, for now, I'm just going to load an end display preset. Now, we don't see that tracking in this computer because, of course, this is set up to receive tracking on the render node. If I want to see that tracking here and just confirm the position of the camera, I can set it to my IP address. Um, and then assign the camera to camera one. And you can see that's where our real camera is in the scene. But when this is running on the 
end display node, we need it to have its IP address, which is 101. So I set that up, I would save it, and then assign it as the default live link preset inside uh, the project settings. One last thing to do, which is to tell the end display config to use that camera, which we do here uh, under IC VFX camera, and then we can just select Cine Camera Actor and pick the camera we've just added to the scene here. Okay, I'm gonna save that level and make sure all of my levels are saved. Yep, they are. And now I'm ready to launch Switchboard in order to get this content up onto our LED wall. And we'll launch Switchboard from the uh, toolbar here. And then click OK on that to create a new configuration. And now we're going to uh, add some devices here. We're going to add uh, our star tracker. This is a new feature in VP Pro 5.2. Um, so it's going to detect all the star trackers on the network. And we can add them here and monitor their status directly from inside Switchboard. So we're just interested in 201, which is the tracker we're using at the moment. So we'll add that to Switchboard. And we can connect to that and see its status here inside Switchboard. Now I'm going to add the end display device with my config file, which if you remember I called end display config James. Okay. Just make this a little bit bigger here. And we can see now I can connect to the listener that's running on that machine. All of your end display nodes need to be running the switchboard listener so they can hear the commands from uh, switchboard and launch the project. So let's check we can connect. Ah, no, we can't because I haven't set the IP address here. So you can do this either here or in the end display config. I'm going to do it right here. And our render node is 101. So let's connect to that. Sorry, I think I have to hit enter and then connect. There we go. So now we've connected to the node and we're ready to launch the project. So now we need to make sure that we have the same content as on the render node as we do here on the editor and we've created a tool to help with that called the Moses file sync. Um, so in here I can now synchronize directly to a shared network folder. Um, you can also map that device folder. I've already mapped it here to uh, a, a network drive and I can just click sync and it will um, synchronize all of the content from our current setup on the editor to the uh, render node that's driving the screen. One last thing to do is select the default map here. And now I'm ready to launch the uh, Unreal End Display node from Switchboard. It's launched a multi-user session, which allows you to change things on the editor and see them directly changed on the wall. We don't need that for the moment, so I'm gonna close that. Um, you can disable it down here. And you can see that's loaded the content up on the wall in front of me. Okay, so the last thing to check is that when we move the camera, the frustrum does move uh, correctly and the perspective is correct. So uh, we're gonna move the camera now and we should see the frustrum moving on the LED wall and the perspective changing in the background. Okay, that brings us to the end of this tutorial video on how to set up end display with VP Pro. Uh, hopefully it helps you get uh, virtual production going on your LED stages. Um, if you have any other questions or need any other support, please contact support at moses.com.